Hey everybody, welcome back. So, got a haul. Didn't take long to get another haul put together, but start a lot out of the way here. Um, got some interesting stuff. Interestingly enough, to use interestingly two times in back to back sentences, um, the last haul also had a monster truck in it, which is crazy. But um, the last haul I had a Bigfoot. The the same you know year model as what this usa one truck would have been springs and leaf springs and all that stuff got it from my friend tim ryan uh this one i got from my friend sam baldwin down in florida um he also sent me that 132nd uh snap usa one and uh he just sent me this one um i went through the usa one talking about the drivers and the history of it back on the last video so i won't labor you with that but uh yeah so this is the act this is the 125th man this thing is heavy i'm not lying this i thought when i got the box i'm like what else has he sent but i opened it up with just this i'm like wow that's heavy and i have one of these right up above yep right there right up above my head um i think it's an older it's not an ertle no it's not i think it was when rc2 or whatever had it uh the company but this is a 2000 or 2001 2002 edition of the Mon the uh, USA one monster truck so it's pretty cool and add that to the monster truck stash that needs to get built so I uh, got that that was uh, from Sam then the let's see the rest of this is eBay yeah the rest of its eBay so I got another one of these which is cool and I want to build one soon it's the Thomas flyer I think this makes three or four now that I have but the Thomas flyer this one's sealed this is an AMT before they got bought out there's a there's a hair that's disgusting my wife would say there's a hair under the plastic wow that's been there a long time but this is probably late 70s to early 80s I don't remember I think it's like a 1979 or something like that kit it doesn't the this uh has the entire story of the uh thomas flyer from the new york to paris race but anyway these uh year kits don't have a copyright date on them but um yeah so it's complete fortunately I'm, i think i'm i think i'm sure about that i think these have plastic tires if i'm not mistaken they may be rubber but I don't know if I'll bust this one open right yet or not because it's in the plastic. But anyway, Thomas Flyer. It's a, uh, what year was that race? 1908. Um, so that's an old car and it's right up my alley. Love it. This is a race car. Gotta love the wooden fenders. They were, they were pre race They were like, dang, that's going to sling mud right in our face. Why don't we make some fenders? Hey, I got a two by six. Yeah, that'll work. So, um. That's, that's pretty interesting. They had just a wooden front fenders to keep the mud from shooting up in their face while they're flying. And we got that. Got this Ford Model T by Airfix. Would, uh, this would be a, if I'm not mistaken, this is a Pyro that is reboxed. Re so what year T is this? Actually, no. This is the one with the mother-in-law seat that's in the back. Maybe this isn't a pyro. Maybe it's a... I don't know. It's an old... Re I hear a chicken outside clucking. I don't know if you heard that. 1980. Hear the chicken? Oh, yeah. You gotta love it. Oh, this got... I didn't realize it had the same on front or back. But anyway. Little not, uh, Ford Model T. And I'll have to find out. Who made this thing? Maybe in the comments you guys can let me know. I didn't do my research. I was thinking it was a Pyro. And it may be, but I'm not sure about that. What's the other brand? There's Pyro that made little... Anyway, next. Uh, this is cool. Uh, this makes a second one of these that I've got. And this thing is really nice. Europe model kits. So this is a Panard, I think is how you would say it. Uh, or a Panhard. <laughs> I'm going to call it a Panard. I think that's what it's called. 1905. This thing is a really cool, detailed little 30-second uh, scale kit. 
as you can see right there, one over 32nd. And uh, it is made in Francais. How do you like that? I can speak French. But yeah, this is a, this is cool. Very cool kit, 100% untouched. And uh, I wanted another one of those. They're not the cheapest kits you can find because you just don't find that many of them. But anyway, got another one of those Europe model kits. And sticking with the Europe model kits theme, I got this. And this is the only one of these I've got. Now these are kind of pricey. Such a small box. Not an 1891 Pinard um, and the instructions and everything that are in it is in fr French and this one also made in France but um, it's really cool I love 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 these almost looks like horse and buggy without the horse kind of cars but it's an 1891 Pinard very cool and I don't know what that says down there if you can speak French just let me know in the uh, I know that says automobile uh, maybe it says the first automobile maybe that's what it's saying was the Pinard the first automobile I don't know but anyway 1891 that's that's going way back so that's pretty cool and let's see what's oh here's one this is cool 32nd scale 36 forward three window coupe by Palmer so this is a Palmer kit I'm really hearing chickens I'm gonna have to go run them out of my that sounds like they're coming up in my shop but uh, 36 Ford and uh, it would it would be quite the challenge to build and man do they use gigantic sprue anyway it's all there it's all all plastic and there's no chrome or anything like that and this this one has the flash issues too but that's okay at least it's not metal flash right like that victoria that i that i got it had all that uh metal flash and boy would it be a pain i got it. now how did i do that now it won't go back in there but anyway 36 ford window through 46 36 ford three window coupe 30 second scale by palmer box isn't isn't in great shape and i'm not 100 percent sure what year this is this kit is number 7251 so maybe you can look that up and see what year model that is i'm thinking probably uh early 70s possibly something like that close i bet just by looking at the box and then i got this so highway pioneers i'm actually in the process of building one of these i'm building the um Oh heck, what's that thing called? Uh, oh shoot, I already forgot what it's called. And I, I could have, I'm bad about that. I can think of all kinds of stuff if you don't ask me or if I don't have to think of it right then. But anyway, um, Le, Renault, that's, that's what I'm building, the Renault Highway Pioneers. But it's actually a, I think an Air Minicraft, but it's one of these kits that was reboxed. But anyway, so this, I bought it as it's a Sears buggy because I think that's a very interesting right there 1907 Sears buggy that is a really like a horse and carriage um, and the pictures it says 1953 gallon and gallon but I think I don't know I thought on there somewhere the I don't think this is an actual 1953 kit but I'll tell you why um, so when I opened the box when I got it, I, I was surprised. And uh, see if you can see what I was surprised about. It's not the Sears buggy. It's a. Let's see if that'll focus. 1913 Mercedes. I don't know if this was factory mistake. I mean, this has never been opened. Even the instructions are still in there. This is 1913 Mercedes. So I didn't get what I wanted, but nevertheless, it's a absolutely brand... Listen to that plastic. Uh, the thing about being 1953, if it is 1953, you're going to have an issue. 
because it's not going to be made out of styrene. It's going to be made out of some, I, I never can remember the whole word, but some acetate material. A lot of the old, uh, uh, a lot of the old Johan um, pyro, uh, promos were made out of that material. They warp really bad. I don't think this is that material. No, that says copyright 1953 right there on it. But I don't know if this is styrene or not, but if it's not, you pretty well chunk them because they warp so badly. And I'll give you a quick example. And this also is an eBay. But this came with two other... This, I bought... Uh, I wanted the one particular kit, but it came with two others. And it was this Highway Pioneers 1915 Model T Ford sedan. And this is an early one. Um, it's bagged, so it's obviously not in the box, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. The um, This is made from that acetate material, and number one, you hear the difference in sound? It's like more of a softer plastic, but I want you to notice. See how warped that is? That's just unbuildable. So when you get some of these old Highway Pioneers that are so early, if they're made from this, um, I would recommend probably not buying it unless you just want it for the, hey, that's a really old kit because, yeah, they're, they're just, they're not. Luckily, I didn't, for what I got the kit I wanted, it, this was basically just a freebie. So I got, that did come from eBay too, but like I say, it was kind of an extra. So I don't think this this sounds like styrene to me and I don't know maybe it's a rebox and they just don't have the date and I don't see another date on it other than 1953 so anyway the kit number is H45-89 so it have been 89 cents so yeah I think that probably is a, a later edition because of the 89 cents but you know what some of the old boxes do look like this so I don't know how to check into that but it is the wrong car in that kit Another one that came in that, the, the, where I got this, also came with this. So if you know anything about huts and miniatures, these are old. This is from 1949. This is before plastic model kits. This is a 1909 Model T Ford Touring Car. And it's 1 16th, believe it or not, in this little box. But, and this may not be a 49, but that's when they started them or at least the copyright, and so I think they go a couple of years after that, but it is probably uh, late for, 49 to maybe early 50s. And wow, look at that. Somebody had a price tag of $45 on that thing, wow. But this had been started, I didn't even care, I didn't, because I wasn't buying that lot of three for this or that one, but um, it says started, but all here. And somebody had started it. Let me show you what you would have done back in the late 40s to uh, build a model car. And I've got one or two of these already. So it does have, believe it or not, I think that's styrene tires. Or some kind of plastic that doesn't, they're not warped. But anyway, it's got plastic tires. But all the rest of it, you have templates where you cut out. But I'm not going to take it out because I don't want it to fall to pieces. But anyway, you see that? They made the hood and all that stuff. The hood's just paper. I think that must be also has to be made from wood too. But the seats, they've already cut the balsa wood out. So yeah, you would have built these things from uh, balsa wood for the most part. So check that out. Isn't that something? I mean, how hard would it be to get a shiny paint job on balsa wood? Now, I guess that is how the hood was made because there's balsa for the... Where the radiator is but yeah that's that's uh interesting we are uh in an era where we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff the kits sometimes almost build themselves but one other interesting fact about these huts and miniatures is if you'll look up um the aurora kits that i like you'll notice that they have many of the same models um that the aurora kits did the curved windshield oldsmobile curved dash i'm sorry no i have a windshield the buick bug the rambler the stutz 
um, the Mercer. So when you look up the Aurora kits, it links it links it back on Scalemates. It links it links it back to Hudson Miniatures. Now I don't think they have anything to do with each other because the Aurora kits are made from plastic. Um, but anyway, very interesting. This would go really nice in a in a in a frame one day when I get my model uh, room built. But to have this, the, the prices of these things, it's, it's really cool. It just shows you all the different, completely prefabricated, easy to build, die cast and die cut parts. You know when you get a model kit and it says die cut parts, you're like, oh, what does that mean? It's not plastic? Well, no, not if it's a Hudson miniature out of this era. All right, next. Okay, sticking with the Highway Pioneers, Here's a 1901 Packard, and I really like this box art. This is going to be, okay, on this one it actually has a date, 1960, Ravel Incorporated. This is really cool, and this is another one that has the box that they could have popped those out and hung the box like on on a, a rack, have them stacked in, you know, four or five deep. But 1901 Packard. This is the Renault that I'm building currently, right there, the limousine, for the small scale group build and a buddy build combination with my friend Mark Batson. But here are the other. Yeah, there you go, 19, copyright 1953 and 1960. So maybe that other one is a 1953, but it doesn't sound, that's, that's definitely styrene here. Oh boy, nice and red too. But you can you can hear styrene it, it makes a ring anyway we won't get into that all right what's next so here's something interesting pyro um vintage brass car 1915 model t i've built this kit but it was re reboxed in lindberg and uh so i did get the experience of building a pyro i've not ever built an a, a actual pyro um, but this is cool, 1967, still in the plastic. Uh, but check this out. Radio Shack, 197, or 1970, 79 cents. I didn't know Radio Shack had been around that long, but anyway, this could be from 1967, possibly up until like 1970 or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's got the, a cool Radio Shack, um, 79 cent price tag on it and i thought man that is too cool i'll probably leave this wrap because i just love stuff like that the old uh price tags on them i think that's really cool and another one with a price tag here is an aurora 116th scale 1903 rambler and this is the i think these are from the like 74 70 i think 74 is when these kits were introduced or uh, reboxed rather but here is another price tag check this one out so kmart dollar 96 isn't that cool kmart doesn't exist anymore well radio shack really doesn't exist anymore but yeah still wrapped in the kmart uh price tag on it dollar 96 so i have a few of these 1903 ramblers and i uh, thought that was really cool didn't even know that that was on there when i bought it but i got a good deal on this one on ebay believe it or not you can get good deals on ebay um all right and here's one that i didn't have and it doesn't complete complete the collection but it's getting pretty close 1904 oldsmobile curved dash and i just mentioned it in the hudson miniatures and uh yeah this is one that i didn't have so uh i've seen charlie mack build this one and i hope to get another one um i like to have another one on the shelf if i build one it's kind of weird but yeah that's why i like to do that they don't make these anymore so to be able to uh have a couple but yeah this is really cool flip box it's all there it's uh aurora's did have some other plastic bags but as far as parts being loose that's pretty common um, but yeah, this one's from the mid seventies as well. And last but not least, believe it or not, I got another one of these after everything that the last one put me through another Hubley, but this is a Hubley, not a Gabriel. So 
so the last kit that I got that had the hideous, most hideous flash ever was a Hubley that was uh, rebranded Gabriel. It's Hubley, Gabriel Hubley. Uh, this is a later model kit. Actually, the, the boxes look just about the same except metal kit by Gabriel is on there. But I did on eBay see pictures and this one doesn't really have any flash, believe it or not. Earlier molds, but check this out. I'll pull out just the body. Remember the other one? It was so bad. Yeah, look at there. Hardly any flash there. I mean, it's got some. Got a little around here. But as far as uh, it being like that other one, no way. So this one is in really, really good shape. Or really good, uh, the molds were in good shape when they made it. How did that come out of there? How do I do this? But yeah, so that... I ain't gonna, I have to redo, oh, golly, how does that happen? It comes right out, doesn't go right back in. Uh-oh, oh, there's my instructions. But anyway, this kit, I uh, don't think it has a date on it, but this is probably early 70s, maybe late 60s. No, no uh, date on it, but anyway. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, probably getting old seeing all these old cars that I like to collect, but anyway, that's kind of like, that's kind of like my thing. I just, I, I like the old brass era cars. They're, they're very cool to me and, uh, I'll get as many as I can. Um, Hey, don't forget if you hadn't already, I'm going to say it anyway, go check out hummingnutmodels.com. Link in the description below. Go grab yourself some MCW paint, some glue, a model kit and some tools and stuff like that. MC, uh, I do, I'm, I'm messing myself up. I'm running my websites together. Hobbynutmodels.com. I hope I already said that. Go check that out. Uh, link in the description below. Also, mcvproducts.net is my website. I've got a couple new things really quick to show you. Um, I'll have more than just these couple, but here is something new. It's uh, drill disc brakes. Their fronts and the rears, the front disc are bigger, if you'll notice. And uh, they have three piston calipers where the rears have two piston calipers. They're also vented uh disc and i don't know if you can see that on camera but anyway they have the slots in there and all so i'll have those on the website hopefully when you see this video if not just a day or so maybe not even that long got the the uh, drilled and then i have the slotted uh there we go so i got the slotted brakes as well and uh different style calipers on these i think these discs are just a smudge smaller than the drilled but uh, they have matching calipers to go with it. And one other thing, as right now, I have other stuff. I'm just waiting to post them. Hood pins. So it's a it's a set of hood pins, quick latch hood pins, and they have the pin and all that stuff already in there, and you get all these together. So that would be one. One shot, you get enough to do like two, four, six, I don't know, about eight cars or so if you wanted to do that. So those are hood pins. All right, well, mcvproducts.net is where you can find those things and a lot of other 3D printed parts as well as ProTech detail parts. That's my website, mcvproducts.net. It's also linked in the description below. Um, thank you guys for the support there. Ellie thanks you. She's making a paycheck and I really appreciate you guys supporting me in that way. Um, everything that you guys do have done and are going to do, you're just a wonderful, um, community and I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. So I guess I'm done with this haul. Now I've got to do the most challenging thing and try to find somewhere to put these kits and that can be a hefty challenge. But I'll find somewhere to put them and uh, we'll get them together. We'll get them stacked. Stacked, racked, and packed. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate you all. And uh, hey, we'll see you soon. Bye.